Hello, YouTube. We have a new high alert because the S&P just made a new weekly higher high. This is huge because the market thinks we just have peak inflation and it partied massively today. We know there ain't no party like a bull party, and oh my goodness, is it green out there today. We got Apple up uh, by 9, Microsoft 8, Google 7, Amazon 12, announcing that they're going to be doing some layoffs. Wow, wow, wow. So when we talked about this on the weekend, and I talked about uh, I was going to a weekly higher high, I wasn't sure what the catalyst was going to be, but I had a feeling it would be CPI. Here we are. We made it. We're higher. <clears throat> Not only are we higher on the week, we are also higher on the month, which means we now have a hammer formed here on the monthly chart. The only one remaining for us to have that little extra continuation is going to be the QQQ, where we do have a weekly higher high, but we don't quite have a monthly higher high. We have to get to 285 for us to claim that area. So what does it all mean? And what really drove it? Let's have a look at a couple of headlines. Then we're going to come back to the charts because... This was a super classic breakout. We didn't, didn't even quite uh, come back down to test the high we established on Tuesday, which we talked about. We just back tested to the breakout, uh, uh, the breakout, and then we advanced, closing at the high of the day, which means there is pressure. And I have a feeling that tomorrow we might get an exhaustion gap. An exhaustion gap just means that we're going to gap up, and then we will eventually start fading back down, maybe even coming back down to fill this daily gap here to about uh, 381. We could also leave it flag out here, and then advance to the 200 daily. That is what I think is the most likely scenario. When we looked at QQQ on the one-day chart, uh, we did uh, throttle the 50 DMA for a while, but we're back over the 50 monthly. We're back over the 200 weekly. And uh, that's really where we back tested today. Very similar to SPY. We back test the breakout area and the key level, in this case, the 200 weekly moving average. And then we push off and don't look back. Let's see what, exa what exactly happened here at the uh, 50 DMA today, because I think this will be very telling. Uh, normally on a day like today, we don't just go uh, gap and go. I'm talking 5.5% <laughs> on SPY, 7% on the NASDAQ, uh, Bitcoin up by 12, Ether up 20, Gold up 3, everything up. It's incredible. Uh, ARK is up 14%. Um, this is going to truly be a day for the history books. So when we look here to the... Uh, uh, the 15 minute chart, when we look at what that uh, 50 DMA looks like after we already cleared the 50 monthly, after we already cleared the uh, 200 weekly, uh, the VWAP here tells us the story. Um, at the open, we uh, back tested the breakout, then we advance, um, getting pretty close to the, uh, the 50 daily. We eventually test it, we back off to the VWAP, then we break out. And on this candle right here, when we finally get our first 15 minute candle closed, followed by a second one, in this case, this was a false breakout. Uh, we didn't really look back. Up, up, up. So this has got some pretty strong continuation to it. And if we're going to see more, uh, I'm watching for uh, more of a flag. If we continue to just pump, um, I think we're going to exhaust ourselves. So in terms of, of an exhaustion, I would say that that is going to be right around where we are about right now, between about uh, 395 and about 400. So we got 401.44 is the low here. Uh, 396 is our high here. That's pretty much where we made it to today. We made it four cents above 395. And uh, I think it would be healthy for us to flag out here, um, whether we flag out above 395 or below it. If we also just keep going, uh, we finally have some volume. So that bull volume could actually be all we need for us to go higher. Um, I'll be watching for an inside bar if we don't get that gap up tomorrow. If we gap up tomorrow, like I mentioned, um, odds are, not a guarantee, but the odds are that would likely be an exhaustion gap. Let's see what happens. All right, so the Dow pops 1,200 points. S&P jumps 5% in biggest rally in two years after a light inflation report. Suck it, bears. We're going up. What was what happened? Well, we got uh, all four prints coming in red. In this case, bad news is good news. CPI came in lower. CPI on the yearly came lower. Uh, Corp came lower. Even got some extra jobless claims. So everyone is out there betting that this is uh, peak inflation. Are they going to be right? We'll talk about that on a future video. Today, we're here to celebrate the bulls. And if you haven't already, I would really appreciate it if you could smash a thumbs up. I've been noticing more people doing it, so I really do appreciate that. It tells YouTube uh, this content is good, and we should go tell more people about it. Um, what I'll be paying attention to here is going to be the higher time frame heat map. When we look out to the one week, 
it's still very broad based in green other than Tesla. So there's breadth, there is depth on a five day time frame now. What about one month? Uh, still pretty broad based. Uh, where we see the, uh, the groupings here is when we go to no group. Oops, uh, what did I just do? Uh, there we go. So let's go no group. Um, it's only really three largest companies in the last month, Apple and Microsoft, they're doing okay. And I got a, uh, an email from both saying they're going to be increasing the price of um, Apple One and then also increasing the cost of Office 365. So these two seem like they know what they got to do when they can pass those costs on. Google, Amazon, Tesla. Um, Tesla, I don't know. Um, Amazon had some news about uh, some layoffs. So watching for a similar reaction to Meta. It's still down by 15. So they're roughly in line right now. And then uh, Google, it's closer to, to zero than it is to negative 10. Let's see what it can do. Um, and greed is back. Oh my goodness. We ticked up by nine points today. So right here we go. We flagged out. We got that little bit of a tick down, came back down and here we go. We're flagging out. And as a reminder, there was that CFTC short uh, positioning, sorry, short covering that happened uh, um, last Friday. So they're like, this likely means that the last shorts are going to be the ones to, uh, to really pay the price. Um, and we truly did get the opposite move. We had a massive move lower yesterday, massive move up today. And uh, I think that right now, uh, the chart is speaking to you. Whether or not you hear what it is saying is different than whether or not you're aware of it. So what I actually want to look at here is going to be a note that I made this morning because I think it's important for people to understand where we go from here. And I think there's uh, people are going to be grouped into uh, three different sections. So I think section one is going to be, uh, here we go. Um, section one is going to be people who um, did well, right? So reminder for those who um, did well, what are gap ups for doing? And at a certain point, um, what this is really training you to do is what we talked about yesterday, where it um, doesn't matter for how many days we go down or the percent decline. Like if we go down by, I don't know, what was the decline over here? Uh, back in October, we go down by uh, 7% or sorry, we go down by 10% in basically a week. Um, then we drop down here by about 5% in uh, three days. What the, what the market's trying to train you to do is to be receptive to the next legs down because you're always going to be thinking that next big pump is just around the corner. So if you're already in, congratulations, raise your stop, enjoy the gains. Whoop. Um, for people who are not already in, again, uh, what are gap clubs generally for doing? And this market's not usual, biggest day in two years. Um, but if you miss the move, um, why do you invest or trade? Is chasing generally rewarded? Uh, well, today it was. So are people going to get humbled who chased it? I don't know. Um, and if you're on the wrong side, it is okay to be wrong. It is not okay to stay wrong. And that's where if you were bearish today, uh, being wrong or expecting, again, trying to be uh, proactive or predict um, would have been one thing. But then, uh, I don't know, like half the daily games came in after the market was already open. So that's like a long time to stay wrong. And if you're just there like, oh, well, Gaps up for selling, and uh, I know we're gonna go down. Inflation not peaking. I know you're wrong. Blah blah blah. Um, you can't tell the market what it wants to do. It's it's it it's gonna decide what it wants to do, and it's gonna push both for us to get there. So, like I mentioned, um, scenarios for tomorrow. I would see. I think the potential for a gap up is fairly high, just because of the area we closed at on the daily chart. Pressure built up all day, and uh, we managed to poke above 395. Tomorrow is Friday, so we will have. Is tomorrow Friday? My goodness, tomorrow is Friday. Yes. So we're going to have that uh, that stream for you. Uh, make sure you come back for that. And uh, otherwise, um, where are we close the week? Hill? Let's actually think about that. QQQ. All right. So if QQQ can get two consecutive daily closes back above its 50, if that is not something it's been able to do going all the way back to uh, the low that it formed back here in July. So we got one. And if we don't decline more than about uh, just over 1%, we will hold that 50 daily. We will get two daily closes over it, and that could slingshot us up here to get to the 200 daily. That could happen. Um, we look at the last time this uh, this move happened. Well, we got awfully close to the 200 weekly after we got above the 50 daily. So that's what I'm noticing here on the daily. Uh, when we look here to the weekly chart now for both of these, let's go to a one-week chart for QQQ. It's breaking out. So this looks uh, not that bad. We could move all the way back up to... Uh, this next downtrend now, which is currently at about 303.5. And that is where we are 30% off the tops. It also corresponds with our top we had back to uh, August of 2020. That's like a long time ago. That's almost over two years ago. 
So that would be a big deal. And that's where we can really decide what's going to happen. This 200 monthly is going to curl down. Sorry, 250 date, 50 weekly. Sorry, trying to talk too fast. So 50 weekly. So the one week chart and the 50 MA is going to curl down. We can come and meet it. And then we decide, are we going to keep going higher? Are we going to fade into 2023? Like I still think we will. Um, and then really just watching last week's high, 282.07. We closed over it today. So if we can hold that area, even by just going sideways, that's like pretty bullish. Um, if we look over at SPY now, SPY's pumping here, right? Oh, wow. So last week's high is 390.39. That's like uh, a percent and a half, roughly from where we are right now. Um, and after hours, we're at 395.5. So this looks like really good. I could see continuation here up to about 411, um, which would form a cup. And then we can form the handle to see whether or not we're actually going to go higher. That's how we can... Um, get back above our all-time high connect, which is going to be the blue line here. Um, we can test our downtrend, which is the red line here from the all-time high. And then we can also test uh, the 50 MA. So that's how I could see us going up here, right? Hitting that, backing off to decide if we're actually going to go higher. And then if we're going to fail, then we fail. If we're not going to fail, then we should be able to reclaim the 50 and then keep rocking this primary blue uptrend here, which goes back to our uh, 2018, our 2020, and uh, our 2022 uh, re reclaim. So this is like uh, exactly what we want to see if we're bullish. Um, let's just make sure we don't have our bull blinders on because if we're tr if we're still repeating 2008, it means we're actually going to be closing near the low of the week next week. Um, that's that's what the odds tell us. It, the odds are not always going to be a guarantee. Uh, a few more charts for us to look at, just because these are really what also drove the market. It's the dollar. Uh, dollar did exactly what we wanted, right? So we talked about how. We got three percent, three progressive lower highs and three progressive lower lows. And now we slammed through 109.3 or our previous top. So if we do bounce back up, I'll be watching to see if we get a rejection at uh, 109. That's the area I'm watching closely. And then I'm looking for us to go back down to about 106.5, which is a really big monthly area. We'll see what happens for the next move after we get there. Uh, but this is constructive. This is uh, good, right? 2.5%. That's half of SPY's daily gains. All right. Uh, moving here to the VIX. Uh, the VIX is breaking down. It does have a one-day inverse head and shoulders, um, but it, it's like it's like back to low teens here. So um, anything above uh, 400 on SPY and below 20 on VIX, if you want insurance, that would be a great time to be looking for some. And then we got the two-year note down by 6% today, losing its uh, relative high. So that goes back to our, uh, our high we established in September. So if it's not going to be support and we lose the 50 daily, uh, currently at about 420, Elon Musk would be proud. Um, that could mean uh, we're going to get a leg down like we did on uh, the dollar. And then on the 10-year uh, note, whoa, right, power slammed at 7% down today, right to its 50 daily. So it, it slammed right through that uh, 4%. And if the two-year note follows... People think short-term inflation is peaked. As of right now, people are thinking long-term inflation is peaked. That's what the 10-year note means. So if this two-year note also comes down, that means that people think the short end long-term inflations are coming down. That's what the market wants to see. Um, we're not going to go through individual charts uh, just because uh, we could look at all of them. They're all bullish. We talked about those on the weekend deep dive as well. And uh, just two more to look at here. Um, there we go. This is what I was uh, talking about to our group this morning. And uh, we printed a daily higher high on Ether. So that's really constructive because this is the one of the riskiest assets. So people are voting. And right now they think, hey, well, it's worth uh, nibble, dibble, dib, dipping our toes here or nibbling a little bit. Um, BTC would confirm it a little bit more for me if we can get back above about uh, 18,600. So I just want to see it uh, get back above there. If it's not today, um, we need this inside bar to break bullish for us to continue to go risk on. Otherwise, we're likely going to consolidate for a little bit more with uh, 17,500 as a key low for us to watch. Otherwise, I wish you guys all the best of luck. Congratulations congratulations to the bulls, which saw the weekend review, and we're able to action that. Congratulations. This is one day for the history books, and we will see you guys for the stream at the end of day tomorrow. Thank you so much.